Well, welcome. In this video lecture, we are looking at the book Think Python, How to Think Like a Computer Scientist. We're looking at the second edition. The authors are Alan, Jeffrey, and Chris. I'm going to be doing video lectures. My name is Arthur Solomon. I'm going to be working with you throughout these videos. Thank you. Chapter two is about variables, expressions, and statements. We have one objective, and that's to integrate Python variables, operators, and expressions to do calculations. The first section is about uh, assignment statements. Assignment statements basically will declare a new variable and assign it a value. Examples could be like x equals one or message equals this. Here, variables are used to store information to be referenced and manipulated by the program. They're also providing a way of labeling data and descriptive names so our programs can understand more clearly by reading and observing. It's helpful to think of variables as containers that hold information. All right, so what I did was I opened up my machine. I'm opening up Python so we can look at assignment statements. So x equals one, y equals two. So z equals x plus y. Print z. So x is a variable, we're assigning it the value of one. y is a variable, we're assigning it two. z is a variable of x plus y. What is interesting is we can do some manipulation. We can do x equals four. And we can now reprint y Oh, sorry, I meant to do print z. And it should take the new number, but it didn't. That's because when we assigned our variable here, it doesn't keep recalculating as uh, other programming languages would. But these are all examples of our assignment statements. Next, we need to be able to talk about variable names. So. Normally, naming a variable, there are some rules. So normally, programmers will choose names of variables that are meaningful. They're documenting what the variable is for. Variable names can be as long as you like. They can contain both letters and numbers and underscores. But because there are certain structures, we cannot begin them with a number. They have to begin with either a letter or an underscore. It's legal to use uppercase, but it's not conventional to use uppercase, so only lowercase for variable names. And again, underscores are appropriate. Name uh, examples could be things like message, or number, or in, or pi, pi. And again, the rule is length uh, doesn't matter, contains letters, numbers, and underscores, but cannot begin with a number. You can use um, uppercase if you want, but they're not recommended. And again, underscores are appropriate. However, there are certain variable names that cannot be used. False or class or final or for or true or and or so forth. All of these are variable names that are not allowed because these are functions inside Python. So these are all reserved. These are keywords that are not allowed. Normally, you don't have to memorize the list, but they are pretty common in most development environments. So these keywords are displayed in different colors if you try to use them as a variable. So let's try that out. So if we did if, you notice if is orange. If we do true, if I spell it correctly, true, true works. If we do and, and is orange, as is orange, else is orange. So if it shows up as an orange word, more than likely it is not available. However, and is true. True did not change colors, but true with a capital T did. Again, capitalization does matter. Moving on, we have our statements and expressions. 
An expression is a combination of values, variables, and operators. A statement is a unit of code that has an effect. So again, an expression is a combination. Normally, a value all by itself is considered an expression, and so it's also a variable. When you type expressions at the prompt, the interpreter will evaluate it, which means that it will find the value of that expression. A statement, again, is a unit of code that has an effect, like creating a variable or displaying a value. When you type a statement, the interpreter will execute it, which means it get, does whatever you say. In general, statements don't have values. They are only interpretation and produce a result. And the next section is talking about scripts. Normally, if we have a program, we can type it in line by line, or we can actually do a script. A script is something that is a predetermined group of code that can be ran and can be saved and can be reused. For example, we can write a script that does uh, creates miles out of kilometers, or it can print content. So here we have a simple script that does print, that does interpretation, that will give us kilometers, and will print out a result. So let's try and let's see what that looks like. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write a simple script. How we write our scripts is we can open up Notepad and we would paste in our code. Again, this is just the code from the PowerPoint. I am having it print and ask a question. I'm having the response saved as a variable called miles. I am looking at how many kilometers there are so I'm going to take miles, I don't know, times that, that by 1.6. That will give me how many kilometers there are. And then I'm going to ha have it return a response. And there will, the response will be there are X amount of kilometers in X amount of miles. So we have to save this as a conversion.py. The save as type, we need to remove. We don't want to save it as a text, we want to save it as all files, but it needs to be saved as a .py file. That lets us know that it's a Python file. And if we give it a second, there it is. So we can't just drag it into our shell. We can't just double click on it. Well, we could double click on it, but it opens up the terminal. If we want it loaded into our idle shell, we can actually go File, Open, navigate to our Python script, and there it is. To run it, you can't just hit Enter because this is a script, so it actually is lining up the, the code. So to actually run it, we will go Run, Run Module. We have to save it, which is fine. And you'll notice it actually loads in our idle shell and it tells you it's restarting, and it tells you which script it loaded, and then it prompts what we're doing. I'm gonna go ahead and do 25 uh, miles, and it calculates there for, uh, for 40.25 kilometers in 25 miles. And then it returns our script, so we can keep uh, processing other code if necessary. So that's the nice thing with our scripts. That's something that we can do. We can save this code and we can keep reuse, uh, reutilizing it if we want to. So that shows us our scripts. All right, moving on, in our first chapter, we talked about the order of the operations. Python will do the order of operations going left to right. It will always look, it will look for parentheses left to right, then it'll do exponents left to right, then it'll do multiplication, then division, then addition, then subtraction. So when we're doing this, if we have the example one plus two star tar, uh, star star three, it will do two to the power of three, that is eight, and then it'll add one. So let's go ahead and let's double check. So one plus two star star three, it is nine. 
because it does this part first. There are no parentheses. The e is exponents, 2 to the power of 3. And then it will do multiplication, division, then addition. So once this is saved, then it will do the addition. That's how we get 9 instead of 27. All right, moving on, we have our string operations. So strings are not numbers. You cannot perform mathematical operations on strings even if they look like numbers. If we have character 1 and the character 2, that's not the same as the number 1 and the number 2. Strings, uh, you can have a, an init that will work with a string. So you can do like three times a string and it will print the string three times. Like Sam times three. So what we're going to do is we're going to do Sam times three. It prints Sam three times. However, if we do, I'm going to do Z print one plus two. One plus two, the characters, is one character plus two character. It's not the number one plus two. I forgot my beginning parentheses. Here, when we are not putting them in quotes, they are being classified as integers, and that way they are being saved as numbers. Next is comments. As we write our scripts, we want to be able to use the pound sign to comment what we're doing. So I have our script, I rewrote it. Well, I can add some comments in here. I'm gonna do pound sign, and a pound sign, and a pound sign. This script calculates I can also do our comments on our lines, and I'm going to comment right here that this variable takes miles and times it by 1.3 to calculate kilometers per mile. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Conversion dot py. And if I go to run it, actually, I meant to run it here in our idle shell. You'll notice the pound changes the comments to red. And when I run the module, it doesn't read any of those comments. That's the purpose of them. Comments allow us to save certain functions, certain wording, so that if we look at this script a month from now, or two months from now, or a year from now, we can understand what the purpose of that script was. That is the power of adding comments to our material. Next section is debugging. There are three main types of debugs, syntax errors, runtime errors, and semantic errors. A syntax error refers to the structure of a program and the rules about the structure. A runtime error basically is the second type of error is a runtime. It's called this because this type of error does not appear until after the program is started running. 
These errors are also called exceptions because they usually indicate that something is exceptionally and bad has happened. Runtime errors are also very rare in simple programs. You'll see that in the first few chapters, you might uh, find one eventually, but it'll take a while. Lastly is semantic type errors. Third type of error, this means it's related to the meaning. If there's a semantic error in your program, it will run without generating any error message, but it will not do the right thing, it might do something else. For example, when we did our calculations, one plus two, one of them responded with a number of 12, or an output of 12. Well, that would be a semantic error. We meant to do the uh, numeric value, the number of value, one plus two, but instead we added the string one plus two. So that would have been a semantic error. That actually, that was the core portion of this chapter. We had our glossary. Make sure that you understand things like variables and assignments, expressions, what it means to execute a script, what a script is, uh, understand interactive mode, things like that. There are two main exercises in this chapter. First of all, it's about being able to work the problems as you go. And second, it's about being able to use Python as an interpreter to use it as a calculator. I'm going to do separate videos on the exercises so that we could dive a little bit deeper in them. That concludes this chapter. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out and leave me a comment or a question. I'll try to get those answered as quickly as I can. Again, thank you and I look forward to working with you in later modules.